Hey there everybody, it's me, Kay, and welcome to a new ongoing series that's going to be a, a really, really long-running one, I suspect. This is going to be my new relaxed, slow-paced, chill-out series that you can just kind of listen to without having to watch as much. This game is Cyrillim 2. This is a PC game, it's available on Steam, and it has consumed my life, much like its prequel, uh, Cyrillim... No, no title, it was just Cyrillim 1. But if you've never played this game, uh, it's probably best I just show you. We're going to start a new game, and we're going to just save over my first save slot. That's fine. All right. Here we go. This gentleman, by the way, is, uh, well, we'll tell him our name first. Should it really be you? Have I really found the one I'm looking for? Quickly, human, tell me your name. Well, obviously, my name is just a hair's breadth away from being Goku, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play it straight. I don't want to really be King Goku. It is you, Shaitel. You have no idea how long I've been looking for you, the esteemed King of Cyrilim. Uh, or are you the Queen? Listen, I don't mean to sound rude, but I honestly can't tell. Are you a male or a female? I get that sometimes, but I'm male. Of course, I knew it. You're a king, and a darn good one at that, or so I've heard. All right, one final question. What sort of mage are you? Life, death, or something in betwixt? Okay, so we have five options here. You can be chaos, death, life, nature, or sorcery. This is an important decision that will govern several things about your character. Chaos mages, as it says, calculated risk takers who capitalize on uncertainty and discord to overwhelm their foes. They're a very RNG-based kind of magic. Sometimes it works out well, sometimes it sucks. They usually don't have control over the spells they're casting necessarily, and it can be dangerous, but their spells are usually ridiculously powerful, and even with bad effects, they usually are better than, than they are worse for things. Uh, you start your quest with a Berserker Fiend, who is basically a melee creature that's constantly berserked, meaning he takes more and deals more damage. I don't really like Berserker Fiends, and I don't really like Chaos Magic that much. I like it on certain situations, but I wouldn't want to be a Chaos Mage. Death is a little like Chaos, in that, as it says, enjoy strength in numbers when constructing an army or outfitting your spell books. You get to start with a Rapturous Ghoul, which is basically just a straight-up melee beat-people-up monster with not a lot of health but a lot of damage. They're okay, and I like death magic in general. It's pretty interesting stuff. The perks you get as a death mage are pretty cool. But, yeah, I'm not feeling death magic right now. It's a little hard to get used to. Life is your traditional good wizardry stuff. You get heals, resurrection, that kind of stuff. Basically, life mages are good at keeping their creatures from getting their butts kicked too hard. You start with a Dusk Crusader, who is awesome, because every time a Dusk Crusader attacks, he gains more defense, which means he takes less damage turn after turn until he just isn't hurtable anymore. He's a really powerful unit, and you can build a whole team around his gimmick. I really like life magic, and I might take it. My other close, close second is nature which is a really generalist thing, and I do like their Sand Giant. Nature has all kinds of stuff. They've got some heals, they've got some direct damage, they've got some area damage, they've got buffs and debuffs out the wazoo. They're a pretty cool class. I like nature really well, and on my personal playthrough, I actually I do have a nature guy that I like. Uh, the Sand Giant is amazing. He basically has permanent regen. He regenerates health really fast. He's hard to kill. Eh, he's, he's a pretty respectable unit. Uh, sorcery, finally, is the traditional just magic out the wazoo class. You have a bunch of ridiculous and weird spells, some of which are very hard to use, some of which are just straightforward chain lightning sweep the board spells. You get a Coast Watcher who is a pretty powerful magic user minion. I think I'm going to go with life for this because I really like the life stuff and... We're going to be playing around with a lot of weird esoteric builds because I'm going to have you guys help me with strategy throughout the game. And I definitely want to have that life magic to uh, rely on to keep things alive if it goes a little bit pear-shaped with some of our plans. So we're going life mage. King Chatel the life mage. Oh, but where are my manners? My name is Vertrag, god of time, and the eternity's end is where I call home. Now then, on to more important matters. You're probably wondering why I, an all-powerful god, seek counsel with a human like you. Truth be told, I have reason to believe that your kingdom, Cyrilim, may be in immediate danger. 
you see a demigod with not so good intentions has risen to power in the kingdom of Kaido. He calls himself Misery and has ambitions to overthrow the ever-prominent Cyrilim. Now, normally this wouldn't bother me all too much, such is the way of humans after all, but Misery doesn't plan to stop upon Cyrilim's demise. As you know, Cyrilim sits atop a gigantic nether roar. With it, a demigod like Misery could abuse this relic to attain full-on godhood. Even in his weakened state, Misery is a force to be reckoned with. And worse yet, as a god, I am unable to intervene in such affairs. That's where you come in, my dear Shaitem. Only a human of your strength can hope to defy Misery, and considering he's killed most other kings and queens, well, we don't have many other options. I see Vertrag is a bit of a pragmatist, which is appropriate for the god of time, probably. I'm sure you're asking yourself, how in the great pandemonium will I ever defeat a demigod? The answer is simple, my dear human friend. With plenty of training, let's get started. So Vertrag sends us to Eternity's End here, where we're going to tutorial. As I said before, Eternity's End is my domain, so this will be the perfect place for me to teach you everything you need to know about creatures battling and all kinds of other exciting things. In this world, you'll need to collect and summon creatures to fight for you. I've already prepared one such creature for you, the Dusk Crusader. Don't be shy, go up to it and introduce yourself. This game is kind of like Pokémon in a way. It's a lot more mechanically dense, I suppose, and complex. You can get away with way more stuff and build incredibly funny team compositions that do really amazing stuff. So, we have our own Dusk Crusader. That's what we start the game with. Perfect. Now let's see how the two of you fare in battle together. Use the teleport to move to the next area and confront the enemy I've created there. Alright, here we go. We're going to get on our first fight, and you're going to see how combat in Cyrilim works. This is a dungeon shade. Okay. Also, this game has awesome battle music. It reminds me of old Super NES RPGs. This game has awesome music in general, actually. Let's see here. And in fact, the soundtrack, I believe, is sold separately on Steam if you're interested in just the music, because, oh man, it's good. I love this game. Uh, okay, so Dungeon Shade. You don't get to see their exact health, you get an idea of their health with the Tyler unscathed. He hasn't been hurt, he has full health. It's level 1 death creature, no buffs or debuffs. Certain kinds of creatures are better against certain kinds, like nature does more damage to life, life does more damage, I think, to death, maybe death does more to chaos, etc. It's a rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, pentagon sort of thing. So as you can see, my ability, I gained six more defense when I attacked. And I'll do it again, and now I've gained eight. You actually gain a percentage of your total defense, including the amount that you've accumulated. This goes away after each fight, but it's still quite powerful. We'll just keep wailing on this dungeon shade. We'll occasionally miss it. There we go. I ended up to the point where it couldn't even hurt me, probably. I had a lot of defense by the end there. So I and my Dusk Crusader get some EXP. We get our materials, which we'll need to craft various useful things in the game. They are Brimstone, Crystal, Essence, Granite, and Power, which is probably the most important one of all. Power Balance I'll explain a little bit later. Well done! Looks like your foe left behind a little gift for you. Why don't you open it and see what's inside? Contained a sword. So basically, I'm just going to explain for Vertrag here. Uh, that's an artifact. Now, they don't go to me. They actually get equipped on your creature. Each creature can have one artifact. You can change them out whenever you want. In this case, it's a sword. It's pretty straightforward. Ten more attack. So now he does more damage. Well done. You're pretty good at this. Use the teleporter again and let's finish things up. Okay, what do we got? Gem of Holy Smite. A spell gem. Now, this is some fun stuff here, and I'm going to just explain for Vertrag again. Uh, I'm going to equip this spell gem to my Dusk Crusader. Basically, it's a spell. He's equipped a spell that he can cast whenever he wants in battle, when it's his turn. It costs six mana in this case. I deal a little damage and get a little health back on my Dusk Crusader. It's pretty useful early on. Uh, you'll notice under Properties it has none. There are many properties that can be affixed to Spell Gems, and when we grab some more and see those, I'll explain them. They're pretty, pretty fun, actually. And the Dungeon Shade is back for us to get a quick uh, rematch to showcase how strong we are now. Okay, well, I have a sword now, so I deal a lot more damage. You'll notice it's a lot more than it was. I was dealing like 13, now I deal 27. 
Also cast Holy Smite on him. Not much, because my Dusk Crusader is not exactly a spell-casting powerhouse. He's very much melee. And if I cast with him, I'm not attacking, which means I'm not getting my Amalgamation defense bonus. Ah, there's a level up for our Dusk Crusader, and for me, the king. Now, I don't fight, but I have important stuff about me anyway. We'll see that a little later. And we're not ready to face misery. Far from it, in fact. So we're going back to Cyrilim to consult with our council. Seek out new creatures, bolster our army, and hone our skills. When the time is right, we'll go after this demigod misery. You return to your home kingdom of Cyrilim. Upon arriving, you hurriedly discuss the looming situation with your most trusted wards, Damos and Hebron. You say you spoke to Vertrag again, King Shaitel. What did he say this time? Seems this is misery character wishes to destroy our kingdom and use our power to ascend to godhood. This does not bode well for us. You must prepare for battle immediately. So, yeah, I'm basically I'm the king. This is stuff you take away from Cyrilim One, which is very similar game, but this is a much superior version in my opinion. I'm an incredibly powerful mage. I am the only human we know of that can talk to gods. So, it's pretty much up to me. He's giving me a core to summon a new creature. This will be a Valkyrie Scout. I really like Valkyrie Scouts, so I'm really glad to get them. I'm going to head down and do that. And then we will start to explore the beauty of this game and what makes it so mechanically complex and interesting. It's easy to understand, but it's very hard to build something that's really powerful. I'm going to summon a creature. This fellow is a Valkyrie Scout. They're a life creature. They're a Valkyrie. You can see their stats, and they have a really unique and interesting ability. After other creatures on my team are attacked, my Valkyrie Scout will attack the enemy that attacked my creatures for a third of his regular damage, basically. So we're summoning that. We've now got a second creature in our party. Just tutorial stuff that you don't need to read. As you can see, he's following me around now. We're in pretty good shape to get started here. We're going to get a little bit of battling in in a realm. And yeah, I can acquire additional cores by extracting them from creatures. And now I'm gonna need to, I need to go to the library to talk to the librarian who has a bunch of tutorial books that you can read at any time to tell you what different like status effects and such do. It, this whole library is quite helpful. You can read every spell you've ever found, every rune, buffs, debuffs, etc., etc. There's everything you need to know to play the game in here. It's really helpful. The, the whole of this library is really useful for new players. Ah, large supply of useful books that might pique your interest. Uh, some books provide useful information about different parts of our very own castle. While other books are enchanted, they'll write themselves as you learn more about the outside world. They're basically like Pokédexes. And... Librarian Katarina is giving me some spell gems. Heaven's Thunder, target takes a moderate amount of damage. He's afflicted with silence for three turns. That means no spell casting. That's a really good spell. There's another Holy Smite. You notice this one costs no mana. Instead, it costs 14% of the caster's maximum health. That's one of the possible properties. Spells can be made to cast off health instead of mana, which can be really useful in some cases and really bad in others. Scourge Nature is a straight-up Wreck Nature Creatures spell. Not much other use. Costs too much maximum health in this version for me to want it. Holy Enchantment. Recover a large amount of health and gains a barrier that absorbs damage equal to the amount of health recovered. That's a nice one. I like that. The mana cost is reduced by 15%. This is another mana cost when your creatures gain Shell. Holy Protection. That's a really good one, and I might actually put that on my... Uh, Dusk Crusader. Shell is immunity to the next attack you receive, basically. It's just a barrier that protects you from one hit of any kind. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to equip... I don't really want spells on this particular character. Uh, let's see. The Holy Enchantment one might not be bad. It would be good to have some kind of heal on him for when he needs it. So we'll give him Holy Enchantment, that way he can barrier up and heal himself. But the Valkyrie Scout's going to be a very support-oriented caster. Uh, he's going to take Heaven's Thunder. He's going to have Holy Protection. He's going to have the mana costing version of Holy Smite. And it's important to note, he only has 21 mana, so he's not going to cast much. The Dusk Crusader has more mana, though he's not as good of a caster, really. 
uh, that can be changed. There's plenty of alteration I can do to them. So we're going to get teleported to a realm now. That's where we go to train and level up and catch new monsters and such. Can our all sorts of dangers and delights alike. He is not kidding. So basically, we're going to level one here. Let's teleport in. All right. This is where the game actually opens up to you, basically. We're in a realm. I don't know what realm it is. It's basically a starter realm. There are creatures here, and you can see they move when I move, and if they collide with you, it's a fight. This is a Coast Watcher. Okay. Well, I would kind of like a Coast Watcher, actually. They're pretty good. So I'm going to try to extract from them. It didn't work. But I'm going to keep trying, because I really want his core, and I'm worried that I would one-shot him, because they're quite fragile. Actually, I might hit him with the Valkyrie Scout, because he's only level 1. Let's see. Nope, that killed him outright. Damn it. Okay, so we gotta be careful. I really... The lower their health is, the better your extraction chance is. So that's good to keep in mind. There's various objects in the way. There's a treasure map, for example. Somewhere on this map is gonna be an X that will contain some good treasure. I gotta keep checking my map. Treasure chest has a handful of essence, a staff, and a death shield. Staff and the Death Shield are artifacts. This is attack and intelligence. This is 70% uh, less damage taken from death-type creatures, which is actually really strong. Uh, essence, these handful of various resource names are exactly as you'd expect. They're just a little bit of that resource, and you automatically get it. You had to actually use them in the original, which is a nice change here. Okay. This is a pile of uh, crystal I'll take. Oh, there's a... Uh, one of my Valkyrie Scouts. I don't care about him. Because I already have one, and I don't really need a second one. There we go. Dusk Crusader finally got a good hit in and just smashed him. That Dusk Crusader is strong, as you've seen. And we got a little bit of resources. Definitely get more granite. Those little pillars. Ah, despite his painfully hot days, the Barons are excessively cold at night. I must be in the Barons. This wood might be useful to make it through the long evenings around here. Yeah, those little, st like, uh, cairns of stones are different stacks of resources that can be picked up here. This is crafting materials. Tablet of Grace. If I get three of those, I can enchant an artifact to gain grace on hit. So when I get hit, I get grace, which I think is a 30% dodge chance buff. It's pretty nice. Is it possible? There's water to be found in this desert. No, wait, it was actually a treasure chest. Oh, it was a mirage. Okay. Well, I'll take a treasure chest, sure. I open the treasure chest. We got breeding compendium. Uh, you can breed monsters in this game just like in, say, Pokemon. Uh, this is a Doom Blight Angel recipe. Any angel plus any lich will get me that. A little bit of brimstone and some more crafting materials. We'll talk about achievements and exalted emblems in a later episode. Oh god, it's an actually a, it's a Dusk Crusader, but mine is much stronger, so I can take him. I'll slow down the combat a little bit, uh, actually, so that you can see what's going on, so that you understand the flow of it a little better here. Let me just, uh, options, gameplay. Let's turn off turbo mode, that will help. Okay, so I got another crack at a Coastal Watcher, and I would really like to have him. Didn't get the core. Come on. I'm gonna keep trying, because I don't think he's gonna kill me anytime soon. Oh, my Valkyrie Scout hit him as a counterattack for him attacking my Dusk Crusader. That is what the Valkyrie Scout does. Uh, well, he is now heavily wounded, so I have much better odds. Yes, I have a core. Okay, so I can make a Coast Watcher now. And we'll do that when we get back to Cyrilla. If this first episode is overly technical, don't worry. Future episodes will be relaxed in the same vein as my Minecraft episodes are, because we'll just generally be talking about stuff instead of the mechanics of the game as we try out builds that you guys have helped me make. Uh, this Dusk Crusader's no problem. Yeah, mine is much stronger than a regular level 1 Dusk Crusader with nothing on him. Just clearing junk out of my way. I don't get anything for these, but they're in the way of my movement, so... Ah, another treasure chest mirage. A crystal and an attack crafting item. Eh, that's pretty good. I like attack. It's pretty much the key to doing well in this game is having a lot of damage. Boss fights are pretty brutal if you don't have enough damage. Uh, some essence, that's good. Some more essence. 
or that wood. I don't know what to do with that just yet, but I actually do. It's right here. You come across a band of travelers. They greet you warmly and offer to trade with you. One traveler asks if you have anything that could be used to start a fire. You offer the wood you found earlier, and the traveler gratefully accepts your offer. He gives me a handful of granite, 250. To clean the trade, the travelers gather their belongings and leave the area. So, that little area was just a bonus if you happen to have some wood. Let's explore this maze-like place. Let's see if we can't get anything else good before we head back. I have to find the portal to leave in the first place, but... While I'm looking for that, I want to look for goodies. More essence is always welcome. I'm going to be using a lot of essence. I'm using a lot of everything, but especially essence and power. Those are my pain in the butt ones, usually. Oh, treasure chest. Crystal and granite. Not bad. Good early game find. Uh, some more essence, yes. Oh, these I can't use. An ancient relic. It's most certainly worth its weight and resources. It's too heavy for you to carry, though. I'll have to come back later when I visit the barons next. I'll be able to use those. Treasure, essence, good. Oh no, it was actually a group of bandits. Two Worlds guy would be so thrilled. Bandits attack. This is a pitworm tunneler. These are interesting. They have an ability called Live to Labor. Basically, at the start of each enemy's turn, this creature deals damage to them equal to 10% of its attack. So, it is an annoyance, but it's not too deadly. I extracted from it immediately, luckily. I think it's a death enemy, so I, I don't have a death creature yet, so I might use it for a while. There we go. That was a quick and easy one. Ah, more travelers, and I still have some wood, so they give me some brimstone in exchange. Good. Oh, there's another one of those coastal watchers. I can just slam him now, though, because I already have his core. I can make one, and I only need one right now. I can always get more later if I need to. I'm more concerned with building a party right now, so I have a full size. I don't have any wood, so I'm going to have to wait. Oh, hey, look, wood. That was convenient. What do you give me for this wood? Crystal? Good, I'll take it. Nope, just a mirage. There was nothing. That water was just nothingness. Come on. Treasure chest? Nope, mirage. Ugh. I want more treasure chests. Treasure chests are really nice. They contain treasure. As one might naturally expect when dealing with treasure chests. Speaking of which, there's one right there. Let me grab this granite and this wood. Essence. Anytime I find essence, it's a good time. Frankly, I'll always take some essence. Some brimstone. And that purple thing is the teleporter out of this area, by the way. Uh, oh, that's nothing important. Uh, I want to explore the whole place because there's no random encounters. There's just wandering monsters that you can see on the map when they show up. Also, oh, there's the buried treasure. It's over here. Uh, it's that X on my map. Let's see here. That's right in front of me. You dug up the buried treasure. Oh my gosh. Granite, crystal, and all kinds of crafting items. Yes, that's a lot of good stuff. This early in the game, I'm going to need that. I can't use most of the crafting yet. Hello there. You want to fight me? Yeah. Ah, uh, this handsome fellow's a flailing manticore. Now, what does he do? Let's just find out. Creature has additional defense equal to 60% of its attack. That's pretty good. So the higher I raise his attack, the tougher he'll be in defense, too. Uh, well, I bet I don't one-shot him. No, in fact, my Valkyrie Scout can't even hurt him. My Dusk Crusader can, however. There we go. We managed to crit him for one whole damage. Oh, good job, Valkyrie. Let's get his core. Uh, he's a... What is he? Chaos creature, yeah, I would definitely need a chaos creature. I want one of everything and probably two life creatures. Because I want one to be a combat one and one to be a dedicated healer like the Valkyrie can be. Alright, let's kick his butt. I love it. Even if he does no damage to me, the Valkyrie Scout still counterattacks if he's hitting a non-Valkyrie Scout. So, those Valkyrie Scout, they end up being pretty good. Once you raise their attack enough, they, they are a significant issue. Ah, well, that's a big old dead end, isn't it? Great. 
I think I've looted the whole plate. No, wait, there's a stele over there. Or like a cairn of stones. It's some resources I want to grab up. Where was that? It's up here, I think. Oh, yeah, there's stuff up here still. I didn't see this at all. There's the standing stones. Give me that granite. Oh, hey, trader. Essence is good. I'll explain what all those are for in a later episode when they come up. What's down here? A whole lot of nothing. Okay, well, let's get out of here, because I think we have definitely explored the whole place. And we should be good to go home. Rather than teleporting to Realm Depth 2, we're teleporting right back to Cyrilim. And we'll let all our quests progress. There we go. Let's talk to Damios. You're just in time! We just received word from our scouts that a monstrous creature is planning to attack Cyrilim at any given moment. We're unsure if this attack has anything to do with misery, but nonetheless, you must slay this threat before it reaches our kingdom. Our scouts last saw the creature several realms deeper than where you just came from. Be careful out there, King Chaitel. Okay, so I have to go beat a story boss, basically. But that is neither here nor there. I'm going to summon up some more dudes, first of all. Because I'm not remotely ready to go boss hunting just yet. Bosses are tough. They usually have a unique ability that only they have. And they'll usually kick your butt. If you're not careful. I want a full party. And to that end, let's grab that flailing manticore. He'll do some damage for us. You'll notice they cost resources to summon. A thousand brimstone, a thousand crystal, and one flailing manticore core. Or one flailing manta core, if you will. But, uh, I believe I still have... Yeah, I can still summon another creature. Let's get that pitworm tunneler. He's a death creature. I could use him. Only thing I'm missing is a nature creature. I'd really like a sand giant. And let's get that coast watcher, too. All right, now we're talking. We've got five out of six creature party here. I need one more creature to have a full party. We've already explored what these guys do, except the Coast Watcher. I haven't shown you the Coast Watcher yet. Uh, he's really cool. Basically, he deals extra damage equal to the amount of intelligence he has greater than his target. So he has 22 intelligence, so if he hit a two intelligence creature, he'd deal 20 extra damage. And you're going to want to pump his intelligence and make him a caster. In doing so, you can actually let him be a caster who can also melee really well. Which is pretty cool. And next episode, we'll look at some of the stats and such in the game. I'll explain things a little more thoroughly. And we'll head down to the next realm and hopefully pick up a nature creature to round out our party. I'll see you all then. Bye-bye, everybody! <laughs>